This is part 102 of C Sharp tutorial. In part 101 of this video series, we have discussed creating a simple responsive Windows Forms application using task, async and await keywords. In this video, we'll discuss how to rewrite that same example using a thread and along the way, we'll discuss how to wait for that thread to finish without blocking the UI. Here's the example that we worked with in our previous video. Notice within this example, we're using a task, async, and await keywords. Let's see how to rewrite the same example using a thread. So let's flip to Visual Studio now. Instead of using a task, we are going to make use of a thread. Let's call the instance thread. And we want this thread to execute this count characters function. Before we do that, let's create a variable called account, which is going to keep track of the number of characters that we have in the file. So now let's make this thread execute this count characters function. To do that, we are going to specify a lambda expression here. So we want this thread to execute count characters function. And if you notice what this count characters function doing, it's returning an integer that is the number of characters that we have in the file. And we want to store that return value in our count variable. And then let's start our thread. We don't need this async keyword anymore. So let's get rid of that. And we also don't need this line right here. So let's delete that as well. Let's run our application by pressing Ctrl F5. There we go. We have our application running. At this point, when we click this process file button, we're going to have two problems. First problem, we will not see this message processing file, please wait at all. And the second problem is that it's going to display zero as the number of characters in the file. Let's look at that in action. Let's click this process file button. Look at that. We didn't see processing file please wait message at all and it is displaying zero as the number of characters in the file. So why is this happening? Let's understand what's going on here when we click this process file button. Look at this. The main thread, that is the UI thread, is creating a worker thread which is responsible for executing count characters function. And we know this count characters function is going to take at least five seconds to complete. In the meantime, the main thread, that is the UI thread, will continue to execute these two lines of code that we have here. And another question that comes to our mind is, then why is it not displaying this message, processing file, please wait, within the label? That's because the UI thread executes these two lines of code so fast, it overrides the first message with the second message. And at that speed, it is impossible for the human eye to spot that overriding. In fact, to prove that it is actually overriding the first message with the second message, let's append to the label what we already have in it by using plus equals. Let's run our application once again by pressing Control F5. And at this point, when we click the button, look at that. To the first message, it is appending the second message. So the obvious question here is how to fix these problems. To fix these problems, all we have to do is make the main thread, that is the UI thread, wait for this worker thread to finish before we can display the second message in the label. So when we wait for the worker thread to finish, the worker thread will count the number of characters in the file, and then it's going to update this variable with the number of characters. And at that point, if we display, we get the correct count. So to make the main thread, the UI thread, wait for the worker thread to finish, we are going to call join method on the worker thread. So let's run our application by pressing Ctrl F5. At this point, when we click the process file button, the application works as expected. Notice we see the status message, processing file, please wait. And we also see the correct number of characters that we have in the file. While we have solved both those problems, we have introduced a new problem, and that is blocking the UI while the application is busy processing the file, meaning we cannot move this form around or we cannot resize it. Let's actually look at that in action. Look at this. When the application is busy processing the file, I cannot move it around, and I also cannot resize it. 
after the application finishes processing, I am able to move it around and I am able to resize it. But we cannot do both of those while the application is busy processing the file because it blocks the UI. Basically, this call to thread.join is going to block the UI. Now, one way to solve this is by moving this code which updates the text property of the label with the correct number of characters that we have in the file into the worker thread. Let's actually do that and see what happens. So I'm going to cut this line of code and move it inside the worker thread. And there is no need now to call thread.join which is actually blocking the UI. Now let's go ahead and run our application one more time by pressing Ctrl F5. Now when we click the process file button, notice I am able to resize, I am able to move the form around while the application is still busy processing the file. And we also see the correct number of characters as expected. So the application is working here as expected. But the question to ask is, is this the right way of doing things? And the answer is no. That's because as far as multithreading is concerned, one important rule to keep in mind is that the thread that has created a control should only modify its properties. No other thread should be doing that. In our example, it's the main thread that is the UI thread which has created this label control. So only the UI thread should be modifying its text property and not the worker thread. If you look at what we are doing here, it's the worker thread which is modifying the text property. But this label control is created by the UI thread. We shouldn't be doing that. Now, if you ask what will happen if we do that, the behavior is undefined. Your application may or may not work. In our case, the application is only working by blind luck. So the rule to always keep in mind is that the thread that has created the control should only be modifying its properties. So the right way to do this is by using begin invoke method. So the begin invoke method is going to ask the UI thread to set the label controls text property. And let's see how to do that. So to use the begin invoke method, the first thing that we are going to do is create an action delegate. And this delegate is going to point to a piece of code that we want to execute. So the piece of code that we want to execute is this line. So we want to set the text property of the label control with the number of characters that we have in the file. So the action delegate here is pointing to this line of code. And we are going to pass this action delegate to begin invoke method. So this dot begin invoke. And to the method, let's pass the action delegate. Now this begin invoke method is going to ask the UI thread to execute this line of code asynchronously in a type safe manner. And if you look at what this code is doing, all it's doing is setting the text property of the label with the number of characters in the file. So let's run our application one more time by pressing Ctrl F5. When we click the process file button, notice we see the status message as expected. I am able to move the form around resize it and we also see the correct number of characters in the file so the application is working as expected now to make this action delegate point to the piece of code that we want to execute we are making use of a lambda expression here if this code is confusing we can rewrite this in another way remember a delegate is a type safe function pointer meaning the signature of the method to which the delegate points to must match with the signature of the delegate itself. That's why delegates are called type safe function pointers. So if you look at the signature of this delegate, it returns void and it doesn't take any parameters. So what we are going to do is create a separate method whose signature matches with the signature of this action delegate so that this action delegate can point to that method. So let's create a private method here. The written type is going to be void. And let's call this method set label text property because that's what this method is essentially going to do. And we're going to move this piece of code inside our private method. And if you look at the code right here, we have got a compilation error because we don't have access to the count variable, which is defined inside this click event handler method. 
So what I'm going to do is move this variable declaration outside of the click event handler. And I'm going to rename this count variable because if you look at this count characters function, we already have a private variable here called count. So let's rename this to character count. And let's rename all the instances of count to character count. So we have a private method here whose signature matches the signature of the action delegate that we have here. So now what we're going to do is create an instance of the action delegate. And to the delegate, we are going to pass the name of the function that we want to execute. In our case, it is set label text property. So the signature of this method matches the signature of the delegate. And we are passing the delegate to begin invoke method, which is going to ask the UI thread to execute this function asynchronously in a type safe manner. All right, so with all these changes, let's go ahead and run our application one more time by pressing Control F5. Notice when we click the process file button, the application is still working as expected. This is a very simple application. In spite of it being a very simple application, notice the code is already getting complicated when we use threads. In our previous video, we have seen how to achieve exactly the same thing by using task, async, and await keywords. So this code turned into this code. And this is a very simple example. Now imagine what's going to happen if we have got multiple worker threads and we want to use the output of one thread from another thread and so on and so forth. The code can get very complicated and painful. So the one obvious difference between a task and a thread is that asynchronous implementation is very easy with task when compared with threads. There are other differences as well, which we will discuss in our next video. And here we have the code snippets that we have used in this video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.